Uh, I'm going to call this meeting to order. It's September 24, 2018. We're here uh, in the admin building. Uh, today uh, we have with us uh, our solicitor, folks at the board, administrators as well. Um, our chair, Senator Rothman, will be with us in just a second. Um, we want to welcome you all here. There is no community members. Um, there are August 27th minutes for review. If you can look over them and give, again give corrections back to Brooke. Uh, it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, our first uh, docket item is actually the second reading and approval. We'll start with uh, policy and administrative regulation 249 with respect to bullying. Are there any updates or questions? I have a question. Yes. Um, both the policy and the AR uh, say that a specific staff member will be named in, in the policy to write the law bullet note 2. The AR will identify specific staff persons to receive reports, but neither the policy nor the AR specifies where that will be published or that it will be published, so people know how to go to. So there are places in the AR where it would be straightforward. Clicking on the wrong thing, where it would be straightforward to add it. Um, when it talks about publishing of the document in each classroom and, uh, let me see, um, under publicity number one and number four, so the error on the policy will be posted on the website and in classrooms. Um, and I would suggest that it's a policy, the administrative regulation, and the name of the designated contact. In each building? In all the places where we'll publish the policy, yes. we also publish. Um, is it the name of the designation? I'm looking to maybe Michelle. I, I couldn't put like one person because it usually is not like, for instance, the high school, usually those reports go to the principal, assistant principals, or guidance counselors. So there's, um, there are several folks who a student can go to and report bullying. They could initially go to their teacher. Um, but, so, okay. a, so maybe we just change the wording here because well, it's, it's not a specific person. I think that's why you put. I said, he said a person, person's crossed out. Identify a specific staff. staff. Okay, yeah, you're right. That's fine. No, um, we don't, you know, whatever the, design, the designated staff in, in the AR. So we have to add that to the AR. Yeah, in bullet one and four. Mm -hmm. And then in bullet three under publicity, it says in the AR. Right? In the AR, I'm sorry. An AR bullet three under publicity near the bottom says um, the principal or designee will review with all students the contents of this AR. Do we also want to review with staff? Yes. That's all. Yeah, that actually goes back to the policy for me as well. One addition that I wanted to do, which was um, so you can fix this book mm -hmm. if you don't mind. Are those corrected? I'm going to do it later. I'll break it down. It takes the number into it. There's only the three. Okay. Okay. But under the policy and the purpose as well, it's the same thing. It's the limitation where it says at the end of the first paragraph, therefore the board prohibits one by district students. And again, if we're adding the same language to staff as well, I think that language is appropriate to add both in the policy and the administrative regulation. I have one more yep. thing that I'm confused about. In the policy, it says uh, only it occurs whether in a school setting or outside a school setting. Then I go to the AR, yep. and I see, I thought I saw something uh, to contradict that. Uh, item four, not every incident of bullying will occur under the jurisdiction of the district since many incidents of bullying occur off campus. And, and, under, and under circumstances that aren't subject. Well, that, that actually kind of. Not subject to the jurisdiction. It's kind of tautology now. We're saying not every bullying incident will come under the jurisdiction of the district since many will occur under circumstances that are not under the service. What does that mean? Well, it means that there's, there needs to be a legal nexus. Um, it doesn't contradict. It needs to be a nexus to the school environment. It needs to be what? It needs to be a nexus, any nexus to the school environment. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, so if there's bullying outside of school, but it doesn't, but it doesn't relate to anything back in school or it doesn't carry over, then we really have no authority over that bullying. But if there's something that spills over into the school day or as a result of something that happened during the school day, then we have the uh, legal ability and obligation to address it. Okay. So as it's worded right now, though, it does seem a little confusing. I had the same question. <laughs> Is there a way that we can clarify the language? Okay. Need. We don't need. I'll tell you why. Because the definition of bullying requires there to be effective substantial interference with students' education, creating a learning environment. So if it meets that criteria, then it doesn't matter whether it's in school or out of school. Okay. So drop all the four on the reporting. Okay. 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 Actually, it would be in the wrong place anyway. I, yeah, I think I agree. dropping that okay. is, is what I see. Dropping, dropping number four dropping number under four. the and reporting procedures up. under the AR. AR. The one that you were. Okay. AR. Okay. Um, right there, number four is here. And striking number four. Okay. And then in the policy, it says that we will provide examples of voting in the AR. I thought there was a question for this. Were there postings? The threes, fours, and fives, they all go together, of course. Um, so, I mean, I think that we're still in the process of reviewing hundreds of policies where we're not in ARs. Mm -hmm. um, so, I think that at this point, if we could put things on 
I don't know, maybe a four-year cycle. So we started the policy committee in doing what we're doing about three years ago. It was May of, uh, of 2015. So if we could get at least another maybe year in here and try to get the other stuff done, then hopefully we could just be on a review cycle with, of course, mm -hmm. needing to update policies um, as they come up. Yeah. So is that a Except when things have to get. Wait, 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 no, that's just yeah, the, right. it's just a tickler. It's just, yeah, it's just putting things on a tickler, essentially, but obviously we'll always have to handle the ones that are mandated. Yeah. So. yeah. A lot of districts have combined this policy with their discipline, um, harassment, um, just because that way you don't have the school administrators have to sit there and help yourself, okay, it's a, is this a bullying or harassment? If it's harassment, i got to do this process, and bullying, i got to do this one. A lot of districts are combining them. Um, so that's something uh, I would encourage you. They, they take advantage of this, and plus it makes it much more likely to get a review on them. So why don't you ask this as a policy, adopt the policy, that way you met your requirements, but if you want, we can look into perhaps consolidating. Okay. What's our board meeting? Is it the 6th? Is that what's announced? The 8th. The 8th, thank you. All right, so that'll go for a second reading and adoption on October 8th with the AR coming back to the policy committee meeting, October policy committee meeting. Yep. I'll make a note in here to consider combining with harms, harassment, and discrimination. Thank you for coming in. No problem. I appreciate it. You can take the chair. All right. I know. I released my gap. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we're up to 605 tax levy, and we have the AR for 605 as well. Mm -hmm. So, again, this is the second reading. If there's not much change, obviously. I don't have anything to Do you have anything for the reg, Dr. Luminos? I have one line. Okay. Kind of thing. Um, Rather than wording it the way that it says in terms of the board providing input, I think it's just more so read. Uh, the wording seems a little strange. I think it's more per se review than it is. Uh, yeah, maybe just the main thing, but at the end of the third paragraph. Oh, in no event, however, shall a district initiated real estate appeal assessment by bill without the board having been advised and provided an opportunity for input. <laughs> yeah, the, that's just to make sure that um, that, if, that input is likely to be executive session. Yeah, and it's just an opportunity for input, which kind of opportunity for input and then review or it's fine. I think, it's, similar. I think it's more semantic. It's just the way I felt when I read it. Mm -hmm. Well, review makes it sound like you get to see it. Opportunity for input makes it sound like you get to see it, and Talk the administration has to listen to what you tell them. Okay. Oh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I'm good with that. Okay. So mm -hmm. for good then. So policy six hundred five is second reading and adoption, and AR six hundred five is for approval. And that the change does mean that the AR can't be changed without your permission. Mm -hmm. That way, it's always board mm -hmm. Right. Okay, 
Thank you. Yeah, it's not much in here. Yep. Yeah, this is cleaned up. All right, so we can strike that and still do it for second reading. Okay. All right, so that'll be second reading and adoption. Six, it will eat. Thank you. Now, this is the other one that has the same language um, under guidelines, first paragraph, for anybody to be part of the property. <coughs> I mean, the, uh, you're talking about 608 there, 608 policy, or 608 policy copyright. First paragraph in your guide. Why do we even make that sentence? Second sentence. Employees should not attempt to cash checks prior to the district. Do we have to say that? Once well, authorized in advance by the VA. Oh, it's good. Yeah. I mean, if somebody does it without our authorization, you want to be able to point to something and say, Violation this could be the basis of a discipline. Yeah. yeah. If, if they, um, it's not such a problem anymore. It used to be when we had more checks. Checks weren't really, they were dated, but sometimes they would get into employees' hands and they would try to deposit them early. Not many folks receive paychecks or even reimbursement checks for taking care of most of that um, by electronic means. Um, the one that pops to my mind oh. is our uh, petty cash um, custodians. So, and obviously, um, we don't want those only cash by the appropriate people. So, say we just strike that first line? Yeah. Under guidance? Yeah. We'll first, sentence. First, first, first sentence. First sentence. Yep, just the cash checks just, table. Yeah, and that's consistent with the other policy. Right before policies take all of that. Right. Yep, just that first sentence up to employees. Yep, you got it. So, since Mr. Kim uh, read a line and it didn't speak well with him, I am uh, under delegation of responsibility. The business administrator is authorized to periodically obtain. That's a split infinitive. Uh, if we could not say what we I don't I have a solution. I have a, I have a, <laughs> I, I miss a split infinitive. <laughs> However, I actually have another the very same thing because the word periodically has an actual meaning which is different from the mm -hmm. colloquial meaning mm -hmm. and we probably don't mean the actual meaning here. Can we just drop the word? Periodically. That would be my recommendation. Okay. Solve both problems. <laughs> Sounds good. That's All right. It's your grammar lesson for the day. You know, we're an eighth grade English teacher. So yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to. I'll do this. There you go. You're allowed. You're allowed. Glad to see if I'm not here. The policy committee. I'm so proud. <laughs> I know. And you guys are here, honestly. I think I have to 
I remember anymore. All right, so, so 19 is for second reading and adoption as well. That moves us to 620. Fund balance. I have no wording in terms of house questions. Um, we added a paragraph, uh, which I like, that um, we would attempt to maintain our unsigned fund balance between 5 and 8%. Has that been shared with the finance committee members? No, it was not specifically last week. We talked about policy. I did mention the policy that we, there were a number of um, finance policies that were being discussed, but we did not share that specifically. Yeah. You're on that finance. Are you on finance? I'm not actually. No. Who's on finance? Vanessa. I, I know you are. No. Amy. 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 No. Which Jones, is Jones, Jones. 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 Yeah. Okay. Which is this in Europe? Uh, as a matter of it's real no conservation of responsibility under guidelines, as a matter of sound motion practice, I just like to, to explicitly call that one after finance. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Yeah, we'll put that last night. Yeah, that yeah. 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 I was planning to call it out at the meeting just to call attention to that particular paragraph at the legislative. But before that, I'd like to see the finance committee have a yes. And this is just unassigned. Unassigned. There are some districts that have zero unassigned. That is correct. But a lot. <laughs> I, I have my usual one on gas fee. We just have to define it before we do an acronym. Okay. And then my next question is in regards to the, the 5 to 8 uh, for the spray. If we are doing this for the unassigned, in the AR for appropriate levels of other fund balances, um, do we want to set a? <laughs> I, I'm saying no. <laughs> <laughs> More than very. Okay. I'm just thinking, for example, with, uh, in regards to some of the other uh, um, the for the medical insurance. Yes. We kind of stated that. Yeah, yeah. We kind of stated that unofficially. But do we want to in any way, shape, or form? Okay. I would I would think not. All right. uh, well, yeah. That's yeah. an annual decision. That's not something you need to do as a matter of policy. It's yeah. something you do. You want to decide that every year. Okay. And even adding to the rate stabilization fund, remember we um, approve the addition in May and then actually the audit is complete. That's when the amount okay. is decided or even determined if we're going to contribute that. Yeah. And that tends to be just to, to to continue on the rate stabilization, it tends to be a uh, number of months of uh, premium. Mm -hmm. There it is. Okay. okay. That's 620. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we just like So I will send an email, and I'm typing it now, to the other board members, since it's essentially the balance of the board that's on finance. Mm -hmm. So. Um, just to alert everyone to make sure they take a look at 620 and know that we are establishing that. There's a couple of them last time that specifically decided the, uh, the finance committee we can make sure as well. I forget what other ones are with. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. But it said right. specifically yeah. inside of the finance committee. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. 625. But you know, with 620, yeah. I don't know why we have to. We have the one paragraph that states not more than 8%, period. Then we say it again between 5 and 8%. Well, I think it's just telling us where we're trying to go. It can't be more than 8%, but it's essentially setting a minimum and saying that we really want to keep it at least 5%. And that's why we're making some of the decisions we're making, is because as a matter of policy, unless we don't want to. I mean, well, it's I a question, we don't have to. It's I'm just saying it could be cleaned up. I mean, we could say that it should not be below five and it should not exceed eight in, in one paragraph. You could oh, say that. Okay. I mean, having the whole paragraph saying it shouldn't be one and eight, and the next paragraph saying it shouldn't be, it should be five and eight. Well, yeah. could we just move it? It's a sentence, essentially, is that it's literally just combining those paragraphs. Um, like, right, moving it around a little bit. Right. Yeah, exactly. you can. The district will maintain it. Okay, so the first paragraph's fine. This one? Yeah, take, this, take the second paragraph. Mm -hmm. Move it out, move it to the end. Move it out to the 
the yeah. first paragraph. Yeah. Right. And then we split them. Right, so move it after, after the next one percent less than the next paragraph. Not more than eight percent, but not less than five percent. Matter something. The sign shall be the unassigned balance not less than five. Take out between. Go back up to the original language of that paragraph. Okay, right. So you break four or five percent. Take out between. Unbalanced. You know, less. No. Keep, keep find out. Find out. Yeah. Okay. Between. So take out between. Yeah. Got it. Unbalanced. No less than. Five percent. And no more than mm -hmm. eight percent. Take out the, the sentence where it says the district will maintain the assigned time. Take out that whole sentence. You want to keep that for that fiscal year? So, 
And, and that process has actually changed, I think, over the years, but certainly. Good point. I mean, that's yeah, I mean, I don't know that. I don't know that we should have that language in there because, right. we're, because we're not bringing the actual application for no. those funds. So just right. Yeah. Approval. We're just we're just required to approve the application. Mm. No. Mm. Is, is it we're required to approve? No, we don't know. Well, well depends on the terms and conditions of the application. Not some some say that they're required for approval. I don't know. If they all yeah. Title one, two, and three are not. Yeah, well, I mean, the application itself will say it. It will say it's right. I mean, Dr. Miner signs it as coordinator of federal programs. I sign it, and then we get our allocation through the e-grants process. I think you need more than the, de the details. I think it's, it's required. I used to oh, send them out. Yeah. Well, you used to send them out. <laughs> I used to send them out. Well, I mean, it's linked to the policy. It was not change. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this is where we're required to consent or something. I'll verify that. Yeah. I think we could, if we just add the two words, we're required right. at the end of the sentence. So and then. We're required. Oh, mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. There we go. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to bring up that if we were required to do it, we have not yet done it so far this year. So right. um, I just checked, I checked July, August, and September's legislative. I know we do them every year. Right. I, I remember doing them. I think once upon a time, that's mm -hmm. one of them. Mm. Okay. Maybe it's changed. Okay. Just have one grammar correction uh, that we've made consistent that getting striking the his or her and just simply saying or doesn't mean. Mm -hmm. okay. There's two under delegation of responsibility. What is it? That's it. The just striking the his or her. Just saying more designation. <laughs> right. Just, we're just doing our consistency. We yeah. are. I like that. I like that. Yeah, our, our next revenue generating opportunity is going to be a style guide. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a pretty good style guide. Right? <laughs> Especially when some policies are written in different decades. <laughs> exactly. Right. Definitely. So, well, the, the last paragraph in the delegation responsibility, Dr. Yanni, what, what does that mean? Superintendent to assist in the proper administration of federal funds and maintain this policy to develop and adopt additional procedures. Implementing this policy. So, with the e grants process that changed in, I want to say, 2013 or 2015, I can't remember. So, for instance, Dr. Miner completed the application, I signed off on it, it went to PDE, and then we have to um, write through e grants. We have to do a mid year. Um, There'll be a mid-year reallocation of money, and we have to update our grant. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, we have to do a uh, uh, an FAR. Uh, I yeah. Okay. So you'll develop and adopt additional procedures. Is that in the AR, or you just do that? I really think in the I really think if we're going to have an AR, we just say we follow what's in the e grants process because that's how everything um, how everything needs to be done. <laughs> I think that keeps it as simple um, because sometimes there'll be changes in the AR or um, changes in e grants. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that keeps it clean. This policy is five years. Yep. Every one is five years. And some of the major changes that occurred in, in the federal have to do with timekeeping, time and effort reporting, mm -hmm. and all of those mm -hmm. items. It's, there has been a number of changes, but not really in the budgeting or what, what we would consider to be the typical financial reporting. Mm -hmm. Sounds like yeah. Anything else? No. Yeah. I, 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 I do have some yeah. comments on this one. Mm -hmm. um, we have a policy, Mr. Sarah. Yeah, no, I have a policy, and I apologize if right. you okay. covered them, but. Um, your delegation, the first sentence says the board designates the VA and the, or the board designate as the district contact for all federal programs. <coughs> we actually have someone whose title includes federal programs, who's not the business administrator, and doesn't report directly to the business administrator. So is that a is that a conflict or a problem? Or is that is this ultimately when it comes to the financial reporting that still runs through our office. I mean, we're involved in 
business offices involved in the, the reporting, the quarterly, the monitoring, and everything. And, and, funds, yeah. and we even um, coordinate a lot the business office with HR because in mm -hmm. our district, most of the money actually um, is salary, salary and, and yeah. benefits. So, um, well, you know, Dr. Reiner certainly does the application and the approval, so to speak. There's conversations about it beforehand, um, before it's even input and throughout the year. Well, I'm not a, saying that it has to be it works by the way. Well, well, a, lot of, a lot of times on the application, you would put in program person, contact, and the VA. Oh, yes. And the superintendent. Yeah. I mean, there's a whole. Yeah. yeah. And uh, back to the actual benefits point, I, I see what you're saying about approving um, the federal. So we do not, um, we are required to share some of our money with uh, non publics. Mm -hmm. And so every year there is a motion to yes. work with the MCIU to do that part of federal programming for us so that we don't have to manage it. And that we just did on Yes. Yes, we did. At the September, but did we approve the application? What you were saying, right? But, right, but I'm looking. The, the the only approval I see is just our ability to contract with the IEO, hmm. because otherwise it would be it would be really cumbersome for us to have to um, route that money and those services to all the non-publics that request a piece of. Oh yeah, right. right. We used to approve the titles, the different titles. And then it's changed. As I indicated once okay. a number of years ago, that was a practice in the building. But I think, as Dr. Young mentioned, it was a change in about 2015. And also, we didn't have such formal policy on the federal. That was, that's, gotcha. that's, that's, that's been within the last two years. years. Yeah. Yeah. They were required, and it was a big audit push by June 30, 2016. Yep. Uh, under guidelines, the first sentence or paragraph, the district's financial management system uh, should be designed with strong internal controls, a high level of transparency. That doesn't sound like policy wording. That sounds like an introductory sentence, and it's all covered by the stuff below. It sounds like, you know, a bad English paper that has a summary at the top of the column. <laughs> like, can we strike that? Do we need it? Or is there another solution that doesn't include all this big language? So I think I think we can probably strike that because if you look at where it says financial management mm -hmm. standards and procedures on the sure. next page, it actually lists all of those. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. facts. I think it's just a summary paragraph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So be strike there. that paragraph. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So my next line, where, where this is in the document, there's somewhere that says benefits and leave and outside activities. It's right before the key. Oh, yeah. It's just weird wording. Benefits are being announced by the Yeah. 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 If this just got added as another and or something, maybe, and the Dr. Cowan didn't get moved, or is, this, right. is there some grouping here that I don't know? Right. Benefits and leave. Benefits and leave. Yeah, that's what I think. Will you just start the yes. end? Start. Comma. And, right. I think so. I'm sorry, Mark. Or Mr. Just Mr. Just I want to follow that's exactly the read. Great. Right. Uh, uh, there's a section called record keeping. Is that your one? Yes. Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. Right. Hiring, benefits, leave, and outside. Yeah, okay, that sounds good. Okay, great. That's even better. Right, <laughs> entirely. So. I'll, I'll offer the moving word. Good. Who's been looking at these, Brian? Who's been looking at these policies, anybody? From the federal level? Or who's uh, been reviewing them? Just the state? Is any audit? Certainly, our, our, our independent auditors have looked at them. Uh, I don't remember if Dr. Miner, when the feds came in, uh, have you had any questions from anyone about our? No. So. 
but again, our independent auditors the first year did look at those. I just worry, I mean, just worry that they're used to seeing things a certain way, so I just don't know. But that language doesn't help you, doesn't mean anything. That's sure. Sounds good to me. I mean, honestly, when we, when we go through a title one, having just gone through a title one compliance last year, they really scaled back um, sort of the minutia, and they give you a really clear pathway of what you have to produce. And if you're if you're keeping up with your reprints process and you're uh, keeping up with you know your expenditure reports, you actually have everything uh, ready for their for their audit. My last, uh, my last point on this, I'm going to try to top Dr. Young's book and finish it. I'll one up yet. All right, yeah, you're, you're, I, I'm happy to have this conversation. All right, um, under record keeping the first end of the first paragraph of this uh, electronic record, including emails. Emails is a mass noun, and therefore, uh, email is a mass noun, and therefore, it doesn't sound emails, it's email. Uh, but it's exactly. better with me to, to just strike this oh. electronic records <laughs> period and don't have to. Oh, there you go. All right. <laughs> that was very good. That was very good. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we're going to be descriptors, <laughs> go on. have a general question because I found the striking under the minority businesses and the Buy American mm -hmm. 
Or, or those standard language, or is that standard language for? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just, just like in front. that for approval because we're updating the thresholds um, and then the policy itself will come back we'll be at first reading so but there's no reason to wait on the we can AR. appropriate number of these AR 625s they're all 625 625 should they be yeah, should we do a point one two okay No. But, yeah. but then, yeah, I was thinking clarify. Clarify. Use of right. use of assets. Uh, I think this is all. Okay. But um, the other one I had is minor. Somewhere in under purpose, uh, it says achieve maximize. A third bullet. As to achieve maximize. As to achieve maximize contributions. Yeah. Achieve maximize maximize contributions. Maximize contributions. Achieve, uh, or as to <laughs> maximize contributions. Engaging in thorough. Advanced planning with broad based staff and community involvement in order to develop budgets so as to achieve maximized contributions to the education program in relation to dollars expended. Yeah. We want to get the most bang for our buck is what this is trying to say. <laughs> All right, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> our, our grammar so, gurus. <laughs> Uh, I would probably have said you got to our buck. There you yeah. go. <laughs> 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 I mean, I, I think it's actually maximum contribution or just maximize contribution. Either 
the drop a sheet, drop a sheet. That yeah. makes the most sense. In order to develop budgets. So as to? So as to maximize contributions to education program relations to that extent. That seems like an awful lot of words to say back for a book, but. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's it. We got the word out. All right. Yeah. At least I remember the word. I have a small one. It's just a word, but under the top we have the word session. It should just be meeting. It's the only thing we ever refer to as sessions. Right before definitions. It's just a yeah. public like meeting of the board. Yeah. No. That's all. Yeah. Minor. Oh, I just found another one. There's a change under definitions, bullet two. Um, we struck court and, add, and added approval, but then it doesn't work. It says, um, permitted in the absence of PDE approval, oh no, it doesn't work, I'm sorry. In the absence of DEP. It's fine. I, I know. Okay. Everyone okay with policy 601 for first reading? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, so in, in the guidelines, for example, do we, each year the business administrator shall prepare a budget development schedule with two separate tracks. Do, do we do this? We don't do the two separate tracks. We try to determine earlier. Right, once the determination has been made that we're going to um, to prepare a schedule with your tracks, it's just not saying Okay, so yeah. so when you do the schedule you right. represent the two different okay. tracks to us. And we've only yeah. you, that last year was the first year that we did and that we did start that discussion last Thursday night about okay. track. And it, it, as we pointed out and discussed again last Thursday, the official timeline isn't even out yet from PDE. But this is going to be my but there's uh, an extra period in that second sentence at the bottom where it says this preliminary. There's just one extra space. Right. Oh, yeah. After review, the second line where it says the superintendent and deputy shall present. Yep. Yeah, right. the line below that says review period space space. Yep. Oh, so take out the extra space. Here. Yeah, that's all. Oh, there was a couple on this one. <laughs> there, was a couple of there is a couple of no, places. No one. On Only with extra fonts. <laughs> Only with extra fonts. Yeah. Facebook. <laughs> I usually do it before I post them. Right. Yeah. I really think we can get on the New York Times that some of All funds will take the positives. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
also wondering on that paragraph if we could use less words to get across what we're trying to say in there. Since a little wordy. And for a while. Because <laughs> <laughs> basically what we're saying is, uh, with the exception of uh, real estate tax assessment, it feel more or less. Right? Current year. Within that current year. Yeah, I have that same thought, but really the, the new paragraph is just talking about past years and everything else. It's talking mm -hmm. about current year. Um, but. Yeah. Well, the, the, the issue becomes um, the past years, the current year that you've been living in, um, collecting the taxes for that year is simply issuing interim. But going and attempting to collect previous years, and do remember some of some of these that may be as much as three years in arrears, and if it's the most on reverse, um, it has been under our old policy a little bit problematic to make the collection. Yeah. Well, the solution, if, if, if it was worth pursuing, and you'd say in the first sentence, real estate per capita taxes for the current year should be collected by the elected tax collector, and then and then you'd say um, real estate per capita taxes for past years may be collected by the district district's business administrator designee. But I don't know if that's better. It's just different. Sorry, we could just leave it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, we're the current current year real estate per capita taxes. Actually we don't have to mm -hmm. But that's true. Yeah, <laughs> for capital <laughs> that just occurred to me. Mm -hmm. For capital, they're very cheap to collect right now. <laughs> um, so, shall I keep moving them? Yeah. Yep. Let that go. Okay. Um, under deposits by tax, or it says under deposits by tax collector for the bottom. Um, in the third paragraph, it says the district shall have the opportunity um, to review all tax bills. Who is the district? Is that 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 wording sounded vague to me for policy. Hmm. I wasn't, I, I'm not sure I understand. And the district treasurer, my standard delegation responsibility. Who really does it? Well, um, actually, our, our elected tax collector has a, a vendor that they use, um, and basically everyone in Montgomery County uses the same company. However, before the tax bills are sent off to be printed, the business office goes through the calculations and we sign off in agreement with the elected tax collector. So we so change the district to the district business office. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then in so the, it's, in, it's the second to last paragraph of the policy. Mm -hmm. Right there. Right there, so the district. The district the business office. Right there. And then the, the last paragraph. Um, it says on the designated annual date and after this date, what date? It says the designated annual date as though that were something that were talked about beforehand, but. Annual date designated by law. Which is January 15th is the lien day. By a matter of practice, I don't believe that the tax collector accepts anything after December 31st. Oh, then after the annual day designated by the tax collector. And I think that's on the back of yeah. their bills. Do you that? The first. You take out the take out the Do we that? An annual day designated by the tax collector. So as the checks come in to Birkenheim, or no, as as the property tax is going to Mike to to, yeah, to Mr. Klein. Yes, the elected tax collector. He deposits them. They get deposited. The, they're scanned and deposited. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we encourage that as soon as they come in, they get they get done into the appropriate account. Which is uh, in Upper Dublin, it's an account in her name. 
in the school district of Upper Elm and saying, yes, the funds are not commingled, but that's what happens. Huh. And Mr. Klein, who's been only in the position right. since the first of uh, the right. year, uh, has been very receptive to modern methods, and he does scan the checks in. Right, because we're changing this. It used to be at least once a week or at the end of the month, and right. now we're encouraging that it be done on the same day. That's, 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 and has it been shared? That's, that's oh, yes, shared. yes, Mr. Klein. And um, I mean, it may not be the appropriate time, but if you will note, uh, if you go back and look at the August 31st statements, our collection rate was higher than it was in mm -hmm. previous years. So with that scanning, um, it's, it's been effective. Great. Will they not scan until this year? That is correct. Hmm. To fix that last paragraph, um, can I make a suggestion? Um, so that third sentence that uh, where it says the tax collector cannot accept any payments after this date, we could just add that after. So where it says after the name date, the tax collector cannot accept any payments, and all taxes must be collected by the appointed delinquent tax collector. It just shortens it up because it's well. Are we talking about the lien date, or are we talking about the? I think the that annual date just made by the tax collector. Well, I think, and that's what I was going to add is that we should just designate that as the lien date, which is what I think it is. Uh, is it or is it not? The lien date is prescribed. Um, can help me out. That's January fifteenth of any given year. That's a different oh, date. Yeah, okay. The date that's prescribed by the elected local elected tax collector is just really um, a, a good business date. For example, you wouldn't want um, the elected tax collector to accept a check dated December 31st because perhaps it would not be collectible or it might be NSF. Mm -hmm. But he would take cash, or he or she, in this case, he would take accept cash on that, on that date. So that's the difference with, okay. with um, using the two different dates. Okay. Just trying to clear up all these dates that are right. on that one <laughs> so <if> I <laughs> Right. The tax collector cannot accept any payments after this date. So if that date is and once everything, December 31st. Once everything turns over as of January 15th, right. that the elected tax collector can lo no longer accept payment for those. The, they have to run through, um, we use a contractor. Yeah, so there's a difference here between the tax collector they, and the There are. I mean, okay. What happens in the two months? So say it's December 31st and January 15th, or the, the lien date's the 15th? Yes. And let's say the desi date designated is the 31st of December. So what happens in that two weeks? There's a lot of reconciliation and filing the final reports and everything. And um, well, check. Yeah, so what, ha that's what, what happens if someone comes in and says, here, I want to pay my taxes, and they said, yeah. you can't take it for two weeks. That's correct. The, the, um, and mm -hmm. it states on there December 31st. If, if you think about and you, you, you know um, what your tax bill says, it usually says on there after October 31st yeah. you'll have a penalty, yep. and it usually says through d December 31st. Right. And in fact, not all tax collectors will accept payment up through December 31st. Right. They may cut cut off sooner than that. Okay. They, so they may accept something other than a personal check. They may take take something. Yeah. Well, this you can't. This is any payments. So that's. I'm just fascinated with the fact that there's a two week period or whatever where no one will take any payments during that. No one to get payments yet. during that period of time, though. Yeah. Um, the tax collector has to sign off. Then they have to. I have to sign off. Yeah. I have to review it all uh, for the duplicate plus any interims for the previous years, and then they have to physically take it and file it at the county. So it's... It makes sense. Yeah. You don't, yeah. Want, the, you don't want any checks coming in during right. the... Right, right, right. It's just that there's nowhere they, they could send that check to correct. the... No. Essentially to for a point to delinquent tax collector. Yeah. It's so can I make another suggestion then? <laughs> so can we make a new paragraph that references the main date? I think by putting them together, the confusion that we're having is also confused. Well, I would think it's confusing for the same reason that it actually well, put in the definition of what the lien date is. All right. But we could, after the lien date, in the last sentence, we could say January. No, why don't we, sorry, I have a third of paragraphs that I did, because then it doesn't get confused. Yep. So, from starting a paragraph, right before, after. Okay, right before, right? After the lien date, uh, it's just confusing. After the lien date, it would be the lien date established by law, right? Mm -hmm. 
Under delegation responsibility, it says district treasurer. Is that correct? Oh. Actually, they, they usually do come into the district treasurer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ms. Balsano. Right. And she's a district treasurer or the board treasurer? What is she? Is it actually district treasurer? Uh, she would be the district treasurer. Okay. Okay. 
team is going to be developing for this. Okay, and there's actually a question, not really. Yeah. I have an opinion on how it should be. Um, yeah, it's a good question, Tracy. Uh, I'm just trying to think of what's different about this thing. I, I think it's just because it's so far reaching, you just want them to be flexible. That, I mean, you don't get out of control where you've got all these rules where everybody runs and things what they are. Yeah. It's not a good, it's not transparent. MCIU would certainly be included in that list, as would PEPM. Um, we want to say that the administration must report annually to the board on that list, instead of specifying the list here in policy. Uh, I agree it should be in policy. And we use co-stars. It should be. Sense, but everything that's in bold 
should be put in the AR. Put back in the AR. We did just take a look at this. I know. Yeah, less than a minute ago. So I would not the, everything that's underlined in bold. I don't know why that's very appropriate name purchases is in bold. That should be bold. So everything under acquired and purchasing should be under? No. Go to, um, what do we say, where appropriate name purchases through state? For some reason that's showing up in bold even though it's not a change. Oh, um, it's not. Hmm. And where appropriate. And it should be, it should be bold. Huh. Oh, it's just on bold. It's just, yeah. On but we can go along with that. Take out the next paragraph, the cooperative purchases. Uh -huh. Everything there, the cooperative purchases, all the way down until this. So then it gets moved back in the AR. So this whole section? Yeah. And it means everything just block off. for first reading, so we will have an opportunity to make more changes to the AR next month, um, and unless there's, we're good, okay, so first reading, 610, I'm making a note that we discussed this AR, however I'm resigned, we'll discuss it again. Oh, and the board president. Oh, right. 
Is paycheck still the right term? All personal employees shall receive paychecks. Payment? Compensation? Well, they talk about that. There's a form of compensation. What do, you, what do we give people when we pay them? When they're getting our paychecks? Um, they can go online into the Employee Access Center and look at their information, their, essentially the payroll stuff is online, and they, can, they may print it out if they so choose. Yeah, and that's the end. All, all employees shall receive payment applications. Payment applications. Right. Does anyone receive well, that just not a case that actually receives pay? No. We actually do still have a few people. Yeah. But it's just, so, yeah, so it's just so the problem. They're getting a new contribution together. They're getting their payment. The payment seems to have to be left. Yeah, he was one of my ideas. Okay.
provided that and provided, and provided, provided such. such. So take out the S. Instead of making it, I 
Yeah, there's a whole list of them. Yeah, yeah all those. Right, there's a whole list still going. Yeah, yeah. Let's continue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not right. It's just adding. Yeah, no, 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 no. We don't need to take your time in this meeting to do that. Yeah. No, but we just will make the make make it a list. And there's, uh, and there's also a weird one that says rental release of equipment cannot be purchased, which is weird. You don't purchase it. It's a <laughs> rental release. It's not a purchase. So, so we're making a list of catch all. Paid for. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And up above, as far as the petty cash accounts, the individual charged with control of the petty cash fund is as follows. Yeah. Um, we don't want to put individual names in there. I assume we'll, we'll That's what I was wondering. Position, if you put position, position shall be designated by the something. Or right, we have building principle. Like it's the if you wanted title of the position, not the yeah. name yes. of the person. Right. So we can. Yeah. And so, so who names them? If who, who's in charge of this stuff? Right. Well, ultimately, it's the business office. Right. So That's what I'm like. So, yeah, do you know? So, for the. the manager, we're just yeah, right. Manager. And I can, I'll certainly talk with either Ed or Ken on this so that we get the right. Uh, I mean, certainly, uh, principles right. would be easy enough. Right, that would But fairly easy. I would want to check with um, Robin's part. It's probably the one I would try to check on. And food services. As well. So okay. I'm already, uh, okay. Two questions for in terms of the administrative part of it. So when a petty cash is not properly received, how does that work in terms of procedure? Like so if they don't provide documentation saying they end up um mm -hmm. they usually end up paying for it themselves. Okay. So well, should because we, the petty cash custodian you see, you see you requires yeah. Yeah. So, so my question is should we be putting that in the AR language there? What um, right, if you're not being reimbursed. If, if it's not being properly received. But that happens with the you know, reimbursing individuals that has to be with the proper receipt. And so, uh, I mean, we can, we can put that in there. I think it would be good to add it. The other thing I had a question was in terms of the, I saw that line in regard to um, that the school district is uh, tax exempt. Yes. And that if they don't. Um, we don't pay sales tax. Okay. But the same thing, if someone pays sales tax, we don't reimburse. Either. That's what it says. Uh, does it pick me yeah. So maybe after that line. But Kim will point that out. Okay. Well, one of the things, uh, okay. Dr. Kim does say in, what is it, petty cash accounts, the third one where it begins with petty cash funds, any audit discrepancies or disputes regarding the appropriateness of the use of petty cash for a particular purpose or transaction shall be resolved by the business administrator or designee. And so if something comes in that isn't properly documented or received, that's how it would be resolved. All right, so 617 policies for first reading. Uh, the AR is going to get some modifications to it, so um, we're already obviously it's the first reading. Anyway. So uh, the AR will come back to the next policy committee meeting. Yep. Thank you. All right, six eighteen. bring you know, the balances of the elementary forward four times a year and certainly in high school is almost monthly if not monthly and, and um, middle school as well I don't but most of the money that's 
that's generated by student activities. It's when it says it's not part of district funds, is it trying to say it's not part of the general fund and therefore not spendable on district business? And, and student activities should not supplant general fund expenditures. Is that, is that what we're trying to say with this sentence? I think that sort yes. of would be the yeah. interpretation that I would give it, and it's not just general fund, it would also be capital right. fund. Yeah. Right. So the idea is so, that it's still under our responsibility. We, we're having a policy because we want to make sure it's properly supervised and it's under exactly. our responsibility. However, you know, the student funds are not part of district funds. So, um, I don't know if I, like, I don't want to say that exactly, but that's what it's... Well, that is exactly what it says now, and I'm, I'm wondering if that's clear or not. Right, that's not great. So it's a matter of clarifying this, I think. Yeah. I mean, is there a reason not to be explicit to say as, I think Ken just, or maybe you said, right, somebody just said student activity funds cannot be used to supplant, uh, I don't know what the word is, the district. So what does some student activity funds pay for exactly? Well, particularly at the secondary level, at the high school level, um, there's a lot of fundraising, and mm -hmm. they would, um, let's use prom as an example, or the senior class trip. Uh, and of course, there's a lot of board policies that do um, oversee fundraising. Right. But, uh, and then also, uh, as far as expenditures out of those uh, groups, they have officers. Again, more so in the senior middle and senior high level, and the students need to keep minutes, and they make the determinations. It's not teachers spending the money, or adults shouldn't just pick on the teachers or principals spending the money for them. It's a chance for the student groups to administer. Okay, so I think last year the SGA purchased uh, televisions, or there was a, a gift to the high school or they were purchasing televisions, which is something that could would be a normal district expense, but they decided to, to make this as their class gift. I mean, if we could move away from SGA, every graduating class, if right. they have any money, again, as part of the audit procedures, they have to make a determination about what they're going to right. uh, spend out the, the rest of their, and TVs has been something, or furniture, I believe, in um, certain areas of the right. high school. So, so those are donations or contributions, but again, the students themselves decided that it's not like uh, principals or... No, and it wasn't the district system. saying, hey, you guys got some money, so we're going to take your money and buy this stuff with it. No, it's, it's not our determination, it's the student's determination. But I would point out that that's, you know, um, a secondary purpose for whatever they were doing, the class of 2018. Right. Graduation, prom, whatever, and then they had something left over. Alright, so how do you want to rewrite it, Mark? Um, I have an idea for Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, since student activity funds are not a component of district funds, it shall be maintained separately from district funds. Period. And student activity funds must be approved by the board. My, that helps. Um, the thing I was thinking of, there's another section in here that talks about, um, yeah, uh, right under that. Um, does not apply to PTOs, which are called similar quotes, organized and governed by parents, guardians, or other persons, or any person other than the district students. So I, I'm inclined to say they are the funds that are governed by students. Is that, is that exclusively true? All student activity funds are governed by students. When you get into the elementary level, that starts yeah, that's a little was, trickier. Yeah. <laughs> um, Kindergartners, yeah. Are, but they're not governed by, they're, they're funds that are governed by not us. But we don't govern it, we just um, approve it. We just, I would note it. Yeah, uh, approve, track. Uh, but the business office, there, there, there is a lot of interaction, and I do review those activities, and they are subject to audit. Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's make a change that Ken suggested, and then 
its first reading, maybe between now and then. Something will. There are some really good guidelines um, that we, we do follow that come through from PASBA, and you can find a descriptive sentence. That would help. On your purpose, we can I suggest to strike uh, the word reasonable. I know, especially as it's for students. So that second paragraph under purpose, the board is responsible for adopting and enforcing reasonable rules and regulations. Just strike that. Yeah. 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 That's it for me. Can, can we back up to the board? Mm -hmm. I think we, for now we should, for first reading, um, let's make the change that you recommended. And yep. In the meantime, um, we'll think further if there's additional description of the Since. They shall be maintained separately from district funds. Period. Uh, student activity funds must be approved by the board. The activity funds catalog. While we're on that spot, in the AR, there's the one that says all student activities, I think it means funds, all student act, says all student activities shall be operated on a self-sustaining basis and they otherwise approved by the board. That sounds like a policy, not an AR statement. And I wonder if it could be in the same way. Right. So, what's in the AR? It's currently in the AR. Yeah, we should do both. Yeah. Um, would you tell me about Yes, under guidelines, second uh, sentence, the one line. Right there. And I think it's student activities, don't we? I don't think it's fine. The activities are so the thing is just uh, would they be the fine? I think we're talking about funds that may um, not special activity, not specific activities here. Um, how does the fine operate on the self-sustaining basis? It has revenue. 
there's an expense and expenses. It doesn't have only expenses. That's what I think this means. What do you think? Yes. Yeah. I know. No, I know what it. I think I know what it didn't think it was. It's not the fund you're operating on a social security basis. It's the whole. It's the organization. It's the, the whole. Yeah. Well, to the extent that the organization is its money, it's. Um, well. But, and also, it's the organizations within the student activity fund. In other words, I'm asking the board to visualize when it comes forward. There's a list of 15, 25 different groups, and even within those groups, you, do, you don't yeah. want to have a negative balance. You might temporarily. Yeah, that I might. want such. You don't want to have one subsidizing another. Exactly. So, okay. Shouldn't Maybe we don't need funding, fund, but I still think this sentence belongs in the other. Shouldn't it say funding though? All student activities shall be funded on a separate. Um, no. No. I think they mean prospectively operated so that yeah. they're not borrowing essentially money from a different uh, student group, a different class, a different grade. I think for now we can leave it worded the way it is right here, but it should be in the policy now. Yeah, there. so I, I would it the policy. Yeah, so copy cutting it. And if you go in that same policy. section we were just talking about it. Um, yeah. Policy 618 will go for first reading. Um, we'll take a look at 618, the AR, again next month, since we kind of looked at it, but I'm sure there's more changes to be made. Um, so that'll be back to you. Let's see. All right, so it's 3.30, so we don't have time to get to 624, 623. Um, however, I do want to say that we have included um, policy 611, 612, and 613 now into new uh, into 610. So we will do a first um, repeal on those. We can get 624. The don't mind indulging. It's really short. Okay, as long as. I do need to get going, but as long as quick. It's there are okay. three sections that are really short paragraphs. But I have no comments. Yeah. Okay. No, okay. Well, if you have no comments. <laughs> and then uh, policy 623, we were just going to review without changes, but unless you guys had changes. So. But there, it's just those three. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's unless there's changes. Yeah, okay. okay. All right. So we will do then the 624, but we'll take the AR back because we're not discussing. Yep. That's what I was just saying. Okay. Just get it Good. Good. All right. Can I also add, I, last month I requested that we take a look at least at the public comment section of 006. Yeah. And we didn't get to that. I still would like to do that. All right. We'll add 006 next month. All right. Okay. And I think our superintendent also has some uh, modifications to, I think, 006 and some of the, uh, the zeros. So. All right. All right. Okay. Um, since we have no members of the community here, communication will be quite short. Uh, but uh, for the record, we do have our next policy committee meeting scheduled for October 22nd here at the, at the barn boardroom. Um, unless there's any other comments or questions, we will be adjourned. Thank you.